Welcome, Joystick Justice League, to the debut episode of Excite Bites. I'm Mike Frusas with a new series where I talk about all all the basic exciting new games on the horizon uh, for different platforms, stuff you should keep on your radar, and what better way to kick off my new series than with one of the most talked about games on the internet of today. It broke a million dollars within 24 hours of going on Kickstarter. Has the internet literally going nuts? I'm talking about Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Now, why am I excited? I, I, I'm bursting right now. <laughs> like You can probably feel my excitement. This is not only just a new Metroidvania game, and I know there's lots of great others. I mean, we've got Guacamele, we've got Axiom Verge recently released, uh, Dust and Elysian Tale. Tons of Strider, the reboot, tons of great Metroidvanias. Why does this one stand out? Because this is essentially a spiritual successor to one of my all time favorite games, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, which is being headed up by the original co director of SOTN himself, Koji Igarashi. So I found this out this morning. I was on Facebook. I noticed that GameSack, uh, one of my favorite YouTube channels, posted a video about a new Metroidvania game coming out. Did my research, found out that, uh, th that this basically was a new Castlevania-inspired Metroidvania. Not Castlevania itself. There's not going to be Dracula, no Belmonts, especially no Alucard, disappointingly, because I love Alucard. But it's essentially going to retain the feel of the old Egavanias, as they term them from the days of the PlayStation the Game Boy Advance, and the 3DS. All right, so it's been a while since we last saw one of these games. They used to be annualized, and then the Castlevania series went 3D with Lords of Shadow and started to divide its audience a bit. I wasn't really feeling it as much as other people did. Um, I prefer the old school 2D side-scrolling Castlevania experience, and in my opinion, Symphony of the Night was the best one out of all of them. I know other people would like to argue that Super Castlevania 4 might arguably be the best Castlevania or even Bloodlines, but for me personally, Symphony of the Night just completely threw me on my head, turned my world upside down when it came out in 1997 because it just came out of nowhere. All right, so we're gonna get into Castlevania and why Symphony of the Night and why it's so important and why it, why people are so excited about Bloodstained. But let's talk about Bloodstain in general. So if you've been following the game, you'll know that it's essentially a new 2.5D side-scrolling metroidvania from not only Igarashi, the co-director of Symphony Night, but also with music composed, get ready, by Mishiru Yamani, who did the original soundtrack for Symphony Night, in addition to soundtracks for Skullgirls, tracks on Super Smash Brothers, um, tons of other games. She's been heavily involved with Castlevania for a long time, but she is the original composer of Symphony Night, and man, it, when any discussion happens about why Symphony of the Night is a genius game, most, like there's so many different ways you can look at why it's a genius game, but really it comes down to the sound. Like this, the soundtrack with this melding of classical, gothic, metal, jazz, just all these incredible compositions truly adding like an excitement and dynamism to what's already there in terms of incredible graphics, level design, characters, weapons, gameplay, just everything coming together, hitting on all cylinders to truly make a legendary package. And I totally see that happening in this new spiritual successor, Bloodstained. Igarashi is a veteran of the Metroidvania genre. He knows what his fans want. He, he knows that this needs to come back. He's been feeling it. He left Konami officially last year to go independent. And you can tell he's been itching to bring the series back. And, and people like myself and like people like Colin Moriarty on IGN and all the Symphony of the Night fans out there, we've been clamoring for some type of sequel, some type of spin-off for, for years, and, and finally it seems like we're getting it. And, it. and it was weird because I had a feeling something was going to happen, because if you were following, even late, like late, late, late last week, and you'll have seen this on my, I was sharing this on my Twitter account, at DFL Bag Boy, Duffel Bag Boy, there was a little site that popped up late last week called SwordOrWhip.com, where if you clicked on it, you'd see a little pixelated version of Igarashi holding a glass of wine on Dracula's throne asking you to choose. Do you prefer sword or do you prefer whip? And essentially if you're a fan of Igarashi's work, you'll know that the whip tends to be associated with a Belmont character or a Dracula hunter and the sword tends to be associated with Alucard who was the main character of Symphony of the Night where with more of its sword and shield gameplay which was different from the traditional whip welding gameplay of the older Castlevania titles. So I chose Sword because I'm a Symphony of the Night fan. Anyway, 
not only that, but I, I was seeing a lot of chatter about Symphony of the Night on the internet over the last couple weeks, and even myself, like, just deep down, like, I, I, for some reason over the last month or so, I've been listening to the soundtrack over and over again, thinking about the game, and lo and behold, this morning, I see the announcement of my dream. So, this is on Kickstarter, it's already raised a million dollars in 24 hours, that's insane, so you know people want this to come back. We know it's not about Dracula, it doesn't even matter. It's the fact that it's got the same look, the same feel, the same kind of ideas. It's a 2.5D non-linear side scroller with RPG elements, unlocks, it's gonna be this huge castle. So why should you be excited about this? If When there's so many other Metroidvanias to play out there, why be excited about another one? Well, you have to have played Symphony of the Night or even some of the spin-offs on Game Boy Advance but more specifically Symphony of the Night on the PS1 which was also ported later to other platforms like the 360, the uh, Saturn, tons of them but the thing about the PlayStation, the original PlayStation version that deferred from all the spin-offs was that it had that digital soundtrack and it had those really high-res um, hand-drawn graphics. Now don't expect Blood Bloodstain to be completely hand drawn because of the size of the team and the budget. He opted instead for time constraint reasons to go with a 2.5D engine running on Unreal Engine 4. But I mean, if you see the concept art on the Kickstarter page, it looks beautiful. And, and he even mentioned, Igarashi mentioned that he saw how success how successful the Strider reboot was with making it look like it was hand drawn, even though it was running on a like on a regular engine. It, you, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. It looks gorgeous. I mean, it's not it's not actual gameplay footage he's showing on the Kickstarter page yet, but I I feel comfortable they're going to be able to pull off that type of look when the game is all said and done. And especially again, adding in this incredible epic soundtrack by Yamane, and and apparently we're there's supposed to be other Castlevania veterans who haven't been announced that are coming in to work on this project. Plus, as of tonight, because the game hit its $800,000 stretch goal, David Hayter, the voice of Solid Snake, is gonna be playing one of the characters in the game. Uh, it was the antagonist named Jeebel, all right, who basically is the Dracula character in this game, uh, who is one of the original people who've been cursed by these, this alchemist clan. It's got this crazy story, so it's really taking a step forward from Symphony of Night, which actually really had a kind of a simple story when you really think about it. This is a lot more in depth. You can check out all the story details. I'm not going to get into them now, but again, the, the reason to be excited is just that this is the perfection of Metroidvania. I still say to this day, even though we have great modern ones, Symphony of the Night still is one of the richest, most incredible, sublime, and transcendent games within the genre. It's a game that is timeless, that can be played 20, 30 years from now and still feel fresh. It's just it's just the the end result of of just all the forces aligning in the right way. And I mean, when you talk, I was listening to an interview uh, between Colin Moriarty and uh, Igarashi today on Kind of Funny Games, and they talked about the three-year development cycle of Symphony of Night, talking about how it just it was a fun project to work with. Everybody was having a great time and just really maxing out their creative potential. And you can see that in the game, you know, and I've played a lot of Metroidvanias, but still when I go back to Symphony of the Night, I'm still in awe of everything they were able to cram into that game. Every room in the castle is unique. The soundtrack is just incredible. All the characters are incredible. I mean, you, I mean even down to just crazy stuff like killer cocktail tables and, and flying killer library books and just, just the, the game just oozes personality and, and weapons and different ways of approaching the game. And not only that, but it did something just completely legendary that nobody had ever seen before, where in Symphony of the Night, when you finally get to the final boss, which is Richter Belmont under a spell, Back then, we didn't realize, I didn't know this the first time playing this, that you could destroy the crystal above him, unlock an alternate end in the game, flip the castle upside down, and try to complete it 200%. The reason I'm mentioning this is because I'm hoping, through some miracle, if people at Inti Creates who are publishing this game, or Igarashi himself happens to see this video, please flip that castle at the end. Gives a 200% campaign. That was just mind blowing back in the day. Um, you know, just Castlevania Symphony of the Night, just really, it, not only being a great game in itself, really holds a true place in my heart for also the the climate it was born out of. You gotta know that in 1997, 
we were on the cusp of the 3D era. You know, games like Ocarina of Time, Super Mario 64 were taking the place of the 2D side-scrolling mascot platformer, which had gotten completely played out during the 16-bit era. I mean, we went from having great games like Super Mario World and Sonic 2 and Donkey Kong Country to having all these cheap knockoffs like Bubsy and Boogerman and all these, and, and uh, Frantic Flea and just, it, there was just too much of it. Kind of like today with like, you know, how there was like a glut of military shooters, which has kind of taken the sheen off of the genre. That's what happened. So when all these games are coming out for N64, like Mario 64, Ocarina of Time, the whole 3D revolution, nobody would have expected that Castlevania would go back to its 2D roots and stuff like that. Like nobody would even think that anybody would make a platformer in 1997. It was a risky thing, but because they were fighting against the waves, against the grain, I think that's truly what made Symphony of the Night special. They really had to pull all the stops to, to get people to believe in 2D side-scrollers again, and, and they achieved that. So, knowing how great the game was, knowing how great the spin-offs were on the Game Boy Advance, and how talented that team is, I can only expect that uh, that blood-stained Ritual of the Night is just going to be something incredible. And I mean, NT Crates is really becoming one of my new favorite developers. I mean, they're responsible for some other great stuff too, like the Azure Gunvolt Striker series on 3DS, and especially the upcoming Mighty Number no. 9, which is coming out on all platforms this September. So now with this under their belt too, with Bloodstained, watch out for NT Creates. They're gonna be like one of the next Devolver Digitals. It's just gonna be constantly throwing out gold, or at least I hope. So um, this video has gone a bit long. Check out the Kickstarter page. I'll throw up the address and in the uh, comment section as well. You can do some research for yourself. But seriously, people, if you've never played Castlevania Symphony of the Night, go play it. Seriously, it's on like every platform out there. You can get it on PlayStation, Xbox. Spend some time with it. Let it seep into you and, and, and get an idea of where we're going to be going next. Now that we've like now that Igarashi's had what 18 years since this game came out to truly polish his ideas, he's starting from scratch, and he's gonna be directly involved with the fans. So through not only the team at between Igarashi and Inti Creates and the community coming involved, I truly expect something epic when this game is expected to launch March 2017. So I'm probably gonna back this myself. There's a cool little $60 um, backing prize where you actually get a limited edition boxed retail copy for the platform of your choice, which I think would be an amazing thing to have. Check it out. Um, there's still new stretch goals coming out. Uh, they've raised at least a million dollars already. The more they raise, the more they're gonna add to this game. They keep adding new features. They already added like a, a local two player co-op option and a nightmare mode and of course David Hayter is officially on on the on the uh, on the audio front so seriously people check this game out you know you can't contribute enough money to this thing the more money you give them like I said the better the project's gonna be so uh, yeah that's bloodstained and this is my new series excite bites so um, I'm hopefully like I said in my last video I'm hoping that this is a trend that'll be coming back to YouTube more often do more topical videos video by video this is probably a, a, a series I'm really going to focus on because, like I said, when I started Joystick Justice League, I really want to shine the spotlight on a lot of the games that don't get necessarily get the publicity everywhere else, in addition to, you know, games that we all know and love as well. So uh, it's all about fun. Mike Fruces for the Joystick Justice League. Check out Bloodstained Ritual of the Night on Kickstarter. Make sure you support it. Check it out when it comes out. And we, of course, will be covering it over the next couple years of development as it comes to fruition. Peace, guys, and game on.